Okay, so welcome to the Crux podcast. Um, I'm standing in for Lishan tonight. To, uh, couldn't be here, but she'll be on her post again next time. And uh, the point of the Crux podcast is to uh, be a catch up for those who couldn't join us in the lounge. Usually we meet on a Thursday night in the Crone Lounge, and we're about 20 or 30 people um, in a community in Stellenbosch. But we realized that not everyone can be there. So we like to do a recording afterwards and to interview the speakers from the lounge and just to yeah um, get some more info from them or uh, ask them to do a recap of what they shared with us. So tonight we've got uh, Meg Brains with us, um, who is a hiker, an adventurer, um, career coach, and uh, just an all-around awesome human being. And we're super glad to have her. Um, with us and um, yeah she's going to tell us a bit more about her adventure uh, the Rim of Africa which is a multi-day um, hike one of the toughest hikes in, in South Africa and we want to pick her mind a little bit about what stood out for her what lessons she learned and you a lot of us at Crux are adventure people and outdoor enthusiasts so um, I think like James also says you're among friends and uh, we'd love to hear what you've got to say. Um, okay, Meg, just for people who don't know, the first question, what is the Rim of Africa? Maybe you could just tell us a little bit more about the specifics. Um, uh, I know it's a hike, but how does it work? Um, you've been talking about through hikers. What is a through hiker? And um, people who come in for shorter hikes. And uh, obviously, it's a, a backpack hike. So how does it compare to something like the Otter, for instance? Maybe you could just give us some, some info. Sure. Thanks, Eddie. Um, I think, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a step back and just actually introduce who I am <laughs> before we go into talking about Drum of Africa, um, just because I think maybe people might understand or appreciate or want to listen a bit more um, if they do actually know who it is that they have here talking in front of them. Um, so, yeah, I beg, as you said, I am a self-proclaimed passionate people developer. That is my passion. I have this great awe and excitement and love for the potential in people. I love inspiring people about their potential. I love equipping them to reach their potential. And I live that out in my day to day by supporting both individuals and teams as they explore that journey of self-discovery. And that looks like, as you said, career coaching, team coaching, workshops, training. And I do all of that through my consultancy called Fully Alive. Um, you and I actually met as a result of that in a way. Um, I live out this fashion, fascination with human potential. Um, in I tend to not be able to switch it off always. And we met on a hike and then started talking about Clifton Strengths. Um, we kind of went down, yeah, a lot of good chats about Clifton Strengths on that hike. Um, and that, of course, also then ties into what the second point is around my qualification slash reason for being here this evening and the reason for the chat, which is that besides my awe of the potential in people, I also have this awe of mountains and love for mountains. Um, and yeah, that's, I guess, what we're going to be talking about for the most part, which brings to your question back around about the Rim of Africa um, and what that's actually is. So in a nutshell, there is an unbroken, mostly unbroken line of mountains that stretches all the way from the Cedarburg uh, down to the Otanikwa, which is near a garden route um, in Neisner and George kind of area. And the Rim of Africa is a through hike, a hiking journey that you can undertake, which crosses that unbroken band of mountains over 56 days. So it's about two months. Actually, I think it's been increased to 58 days at the moment. Um, the full route is broken into nine different sections. Most people come in to do only one or maybe two of those sections. But three of us back in 2019 completed the through hike. 
And that means doing all nine sections back to back. At that point, there was only there were only four people that had ever done it before. And myself and Nadine were the first lady through hikers to attempt or to finish it. <laughs> um, overall, the route, it's about 700 to 750 kilometers, depending on whose GPS you ask. And also the route varies slightly from one year to the next. Most of that hiking is off trail. So in other words, if you are imagining, you know, the average hiking trail that someone may think of to go up Table Mountain, etc. It was largely not that. <laughs> it was like going up the mountain next to that trail or very far from that trail. Uh, there were a lot of weird, strange moments where we did need to cross civilization and we walked along a train track or along a jeep track or something like that, but most of it was off trail. Yeah, so that's that's what the Rim of Africa is. Um, maybe something about food and backpacks and supplies. You guys stayed in tents, I think. Yes, we did. So 90% of those 56 nights, I did sleep in my tiny little one-man tent. Um, that was my little safe haven every night. Um, the other few nights were maybe the nights that I decided to sleep under the stars because it was good weather or the one or two nights where we stayed maybe inside a hut or something like that, where we got to sleep on a bed, but that was definitely not, didn't happen very often. And sometimes actually we were camping outside the hut <laughs> because somebody else was using the hut at the time. Food wise um, and backpack wise. So as I mentioned, the overall route is broken up into nine different sections and people are coming in and out all the time. And so at the beginning and end of each of those different sections, we did have the opportunity to get a food resupply. We had each needed to kind of plan out or have prepared in advance all of our food. Um, and we did also have the opportunity on most of the traverses for a midway food drop. So in other words, we were fortunately only needing to carry about three or four days worth of food at the time on average. Sometimes that stretched to five or six days, but it was largely about three or four days. In terms of the, the route and just how it worked as well, it is a guided expedition. So the route is not something that someone can just decide to do themselves, unfortunately. It crosses a lot of private land for which the Rim of Africa Trust has obtained special permission to be able to cross. And we did then have at least two guides per section, depending on how many participants there were on the section. And that actually ranged from, on one traverse, it was just the, us three through hikers, and one other participant and the two guides, so six of us in total. On other sections, there were as many as, I think, 18 or so people. So it did vary quite a bit. Um, Meg, you, you showed us amazing pictures, beautiful pictures in, in your slideshow. And um, quite sad that we don't uh, have that now. And I think it's quite hard for a listener to get the, the sense of what it was like living in the mountains for those two months. Um, the sunrises, the making of the food, the camping, the being outside in the wind and the rain, um, such a visceral uh, body body experience. Anyway, so it's, it's kind of hard to communicate that. Um, I know there was some kind of a video or full made of this. Maybe you can tell us about that. Yes, sure. So very unexpectedly, huge, incredible, amazing privilege. On traverse number five, there was a professional videographer that came along as a participant. And he joined bringing along all his camera gear with the intention of perhaps getting some stock footage, some nice time lapses of clouds going over mountains <laughs> or whatever. But Early on in that traverse, that middle, it was the fifth traverse of the middle one, uh, what ha happened was that we actually 
lost one of our fellow through hikers. We started out four through hikers and right on the fifth, first day of the fifth traverse, one of the, the fourth through hiker needed to pull out. And Donnie, the videographer, explained afterwards that he witnessed that moment seeing what was happening between this group of through hikers needing to say goodbye to a fellow through hiker and he realized that there was a real human story that he wanted to tell in that and that's actually one of his kind of pet projects or, or hobbies that he enjoys is telling human stories and he decided he wanted to tell the story of these then three crazy through hikers and their journey <laughs> on the rim of Africa. So we have this incredible footage, professional footage. He told that story of our middle traverse, which included our halfway point, and then also decided to come back on the final and ninth traverse to join us again and kind of film the ending of the story of our through hike. So if anybody is interested, I would highly recommend, they say a picture speaks a thousand words, a video speaks 10 times more than that, a thousand times more than that. So take a look. Um, his name is Donnie van der Westezen, but for us South Africans, uh, he well, he's changed that for uh, the international market and he goes under Donny Westhouse on YouTube. So D-O-N-N-Y Westhouse on YouTube and just take a look for Rome of Africa and you'll be able to take a look at those two videos. Um, Meg, I really want to get to the why of this, the why um, this experience. But before that, let's just quickly talk about the how as in how was it? Um, you endeavored to do this thing. Uh, what was it like? What was your experience? And I think especially what, what surprised you about it? What was different than you expected? Hmm. Yeah, so the days and the experience definitely ranged from one day to the next. I think overall, looking back, the sum total of it definitely incredible, amazing, life-changing, once-in-a-lifetime kind of experience. But that didn't come all with days of smiling and happy days and puppies and rainbows. <laughs> there were definitely lots of really difficult days, the days when your body just perhaps isn't cooperating. And that, of course, the tiredness and just general physical off days that come with any kind of physical activity as well as days of actually being really sick. I had flu once, a stomach bug another time. I got injured a few times as well, whether it was shin splints or a rolled ankle. And you just need to keep going actually through that, regardless of that. Keep going no matter what, no matter the rain, the weather, the cold. Sometimes on days that were really long, where we needed to get to a certain point to reach a, a campsite, we needed to find water to be able to camp, etc. And also to be able to make the progress that was needed to still meet the deadlines of getting to the next crossover point. So it was difficult as well, because to a large extent, you're also, you're tied to the group, right? You can't just decide to take a tea break whenever you want to take a tea break <laughs> you you're moving with a group you're moving with deadlines according to that group as well and so that was at, at times it could be it could be quite tough the group of course was also a big part of what made it so fun that you get to know people that you wouldn't necessarily have come across in other situations people from very different walks and stages of life and to live in different parts of the country or some in different parts of the world as well. And so 
getting to know those people, often you don't even know what their surnames are. Nine out of, nine out of 10 of those people, I don't, didn't know what their surnames were, never did, probably never will, don't know too much about them really. But there's also just this bond or connection that comes through that shared experience and that shared time with them. You do have some really deep conversations transcending very quickly transcending small talk and you get this shared bond or connection like no other so that was a good part and then of course I mean come on it was two months in the mountains right <laughs> so all of those challenges and difficulties etc described above like previously that was also exactly what made it fun as well the very vast and varied terrain that we walked through um when the days when maybe the sun did finally come out after you just had a few days of back-to-back -back rain and you were starting to wonder i had a, an instance where my tent was leaking due to a bit of a design flaw and wind and rain and velcro don't mix <laughs> to keep you dry at night. They are not a good combination for being dry at night. So I had two nights of getting a fine mist of rain coming in through the air vents in my tent. And um, it was on the third morning when I was just getting to the point of thinking if I have another night of rain like that, I'm definitely have zero insulation for that night in my wet, wet sleeping bag. And then the sun came out and it's just glorious. And I can still distinctly remember that moment of sitting down for a tea break, feeling the warmth of the sun, pulling out my sleeping bag and laying it out to get dry a bit. And yeah, those moments of be, just being in nature, sitting down with a group to make a cup of tea or to have lunch and you are surrounded on every side by mountains by nature in a wild land that is largely mostly unreached untouched because as i said it's off trail it's not like you can call up cape nature and get a permit to go and do this hike so you're in these wild untouched areas and you know that your body took you there you took every single step that got you into that spot and those moments are just incredible. Mm. Yeah. I think you describe it so well. Um, I think those of us who are hikers as well, it's it's hard to describe if you um, if you don't have that love yourself, and it's hard to put into words. Um, but I think, like you said, hiking is its own reward. Um, there's no prize at the end. There's no. Um, it's not a career move. It's not even a vacation because it's too hard. You know, it's too tough. Uh, you have to be signing up for voluntary suffering in the mountains. <laughs> that thing is is its own reward, and I think that's why hiking and and mountaineering is so um, absolutely rewarding. Um, I think we've talked a lot about the idea of pilgrimages at at Crux, and I wondered, like, did you? see this as a pilgrimage or do you feel like there was a spiritual um, element to it and also have you done similar kinds of things like this um, that you could describe as a pilgrimage how was your experience in that regard hmm um it's an interesting question I don't think I necessarily approached Rim of Africa as a pilgrimage mm. I definitely didn't think of it in that way when when I started I also realized the comparison of the different kind of life situations life stages with my two fellow through hikers the one was in her early mid-20s and kind of going through some transitions around career and what she wanted to do with her life and the other was in his 50s I think <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I he was you know he is this incredible serial entrepreneur who had just sold one of his companies 
and was doing the rim of Africa as a bit of a, a detox of the rat race and wanting to kind of come back to himself um, and to, to the little boy inside him again. And so I think in that sense, I can see how for them, there was this kind of pilgrimage element to it. I was in my mid thirties, early to mid thirties, I was uh, quite satisfied in my career, loving it. It wasn't, you know, I was in a very, just a very different life stage. And so I don't feel like there was necessary that sense of tension around trying to get away from something or rediscover something in my initial intention in going. To be honest, I just, there was this opportunity to spend two months in the mountains and I jumped at it. I thought it sounded like a really, really good idea, which it was. Um, but this whole idea of, of pilgrimage and of nature and of what it can do for you is something that was then developed in me partly as a result, I think, of my intense experience during the Rim of Africa. So while I haven't yet done some kind of other pilgrimage or anything like this, it is definitely something that I do think about. And I'm actually exploring a new venture at the moment, business kind of opportunity. I don't know if it's quite business what it will be, but which is about exactly that, about creating moments for people to step back from their busy lives and just be in nature, whether that's creating those moments for an afternoon, for a day or for a weekend or multiple days, still kind of working it out very much still developing the idea, but it's rooted for sure in the sense, in the, these ideas of, of quietness, of stillness, of solitude, of how that and nature connects to and refreshes our mental, physical, spiritual, emotional well-being. And also linking, it's one of those things where you know you got to explore this idea because within a short period of the initial idea coming to me and within about two weeks, there were a number of key moments where I had conversations or listened to another podcast or a sermon or something that all just kind of pointed to this. And one of those things was exploring the idea of Eremos in the Bible, which is the word for wilderness. And just of how the wilderness in, within that space, it's it's this time or space of, of desolation, of quietness, but it's also something that is really necessary and empowering for the person experiencing it. So, for example, Jesus was in the wilderness in this Ramos when he was tempted by Satan during that experience, but it's immediately after that that he comes back and he has that moment with John the Baptist and, you know, gets baptized and the voice that comes down from heaven saying, you know, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And that really then launches and kickstarts his, his ministry period after that. So exploring that space of, you know, within the biblical context, the Ramos, what that, what does that mean? And then also the idea as well of it being an opportunity for for, for, for justice components to it as well. Um, I live in the southern suburbs of Cape Town. The mountain is literally less than 10 minutes away from me. And within 10 minutes, I can access a number of different points of really beautiful, incredible nature, whether it's the mountains or parks or green belts, etc. But there are many people who don't have that kind of easy access and who don't then get all of that quietness, stillness, solitude, having that sense of nature, the refreshing of their mental well-being, et cetera, as a result. So yeah, it's it's the idea. 
that is kind of being born, that is coming out, watch this space. I don't know <laughs> what it's going to exactly turn into. I wish I had some kind of a web page or something that I could link people to right now. It's not quite at that stage yet. But yeah, in the meantime, they can, if anybody that does kind of pique anybody's interest, they can reach out to me via email. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, Which I, I, we will include in the yes, link yes, at the yes, bottom, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> Meg at we can be fully alive .com. That okay, awesome. Just, just repeat address. that. Meg at we can be fully alive. We can be fully alive .com. Awesome. I was going to ask that at the end, like if people wanted to get in touch with you, um, your website is fully alive .com, right? Also, we can be fully well, alive. Well, we can be fully alive .com. Okay, awesome. Yes. Um, I loved what what you also said that one of the guides, um, as a what do you call the rewilding ex exercise, he mm -hmm. asked you to walk the first part of every day um, in silence. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. There were moments of that as well, which again was part of this unexpected pilgrimage right mm -hmm. unexpected kind of creation of a pilgrimage that I, mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily enter into but found yeah. myself being part of and yeah. it had been a really incredible experience those moments mm -hmm. of walking in silence for a period had been mm -hmm. really powerful as well yes. yeah and I think doing something like that um, intentionally um, I mean the stuff you can build into your everyday life as well uh, you don't need the, the two month, the months in the mountain. I mean, I think if you make those spaces in your everyday life, um, yeah, that's that's ways of going to that wilderness, even if you're just at your home. Um, I think, yeah, there's so much more I'd like to know and ask you, but this is this is it for now. Um, People can definitely get in touch with you and they can do more research on the rim if they want, or they could just uh, reach out to you for your coaching and your team building and all of the cool things you do. Um, maybe just as a last question, uh, I did think you touched on it, uh, the biblical aspect, but uh, yeah, from a faith perspective, do you feel like the Meg before Rim of Africa is different than the one after? Um, do you feel like there's something that God wanted to show you in this experience, uh, show you or teach you that, yeah, that you needed to to hear? Before and the make after question, sometimes difficult to distill that for ourselves, mm -hmm. but I think it definitely did open up my mind to what is possible. Mm -hmm from a very kind of practical perspective, I look at mountains very differently to how I did before. The way that we engaged with, interacted with the mountain, and then also the way in which we needed to go about route finding and how we, you know, walked the mountains quite physically and, and literally we would sometimes be following along a certain path and then suddenly it's just like, right, okay, yeah, let's turn left. And you break off the path wow. and start whacking your way through a protea forest <laughs> or something like that. Um, so I think as much as that's, you know, in, on a very practical perspective from the mountain perspective, I don't think that can help, but also impact how I consider all challenges as well. Mm -hmm. And the idea that just because you can't see a path doesn't mean that there isn't a route to walk. And I think that's certainly something that I can approach any challenge and situation in life with afterwards as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Meg, you told us a little bit about the what and the how of the, the Rome of Africa and this experience, but maybe just give us something more about the why. Why would uh, anyone go through this much suffering, this much pain, living in the mountains for two months? Um, explain <laughs> something of that deep inner why that was um, motivating you. Yeah. So uh, I think with this question, Eddie, 
if I can be a little bit cheeky, and I'm actually just going to quote past Meg rather than having present Meg <laughs> share that. So in order to do Rob of Africa, I did need to send in an application. And as part of that application, I did motivate why it was that I wanted to do this whole experience. And so I'm actually just going to read and share with you and whoever's listening <laughs> that what that, that application was and what I shared there. Great. So I am a born and bred Cape Tonian. I feel like somehow the Western Cape Mountains were baked into my blood. From Table Mountain to those further field, they rise up in the goosebumps I get whenever I look at them. It can be dangerous when I'm driving a mountain pass. So the Rim of Africa through hike has naturally danced around my dreams ever since I first heard about it. Friends' responses when I explained it to them, two months of hiking? Are you crazy? Yes, two months of hiking. Can you imagine anything more incredible than that? Two months of exploring, cherishing, reveling in the mountains that I carry in my blood. Two months of simply simplifying life down to one foot in front of another, one step at a time, with belongings reduced to what I can carry on my back and no frills meals representing fuel for the next day. These are the thoughts that might turn others away. But these are the incredible, mind-blowing, life-changing, what else could compare challenges that exhilarate me even just thinking of it. The challenge of 56 days of hiking, the sweet bliss of that much time in nature mixed with pushing, whacking right out the park, my limits, both mentally and physically. I love the feeling of being somewhere so far from civilization and knowing that I'd reached that point by marshalling the strength of my own body. I remember past hiking moments where all I could do was promise myself to just keep taking one step at a time as I made my slow way onward. I've had hiking experiences where the elements have bested us, lack of water, or unstable fire swept terrain forcing us to abort for safety. Experiences like those serve only to confirm my awe of the mountains. We sometimes think we can just conquer, but we need to approach these enduring giants with respect. So these moments of defeat, as much as the triumphant moments of trails successfully completed, fuel this hunger in me to explore, adventure, stretch my capacity, and hike more mountains. So it might sound crazy, or perhaps you understand, but I'm looking forward to the tough moments as much as the beautiful views and the rock pool swims. The thought that this is going to be the biggest physical and mental challenge I've ever taken on is thrilling to me. The aches, the pains, the grueling uphills, the cold nights are what make the sweet moments even sweeter and what make, will make it that much more triumphant to look back at the end and say, I did it. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to end off there, Meg. Thank you so, so much for your time and uh, gathering with me late at night to do this, uh, this podcast. And thanks for coming to the lounge all the way from Cape Town. It's so good to get to know you better. Um, if there are any of the listeners who just stumbled across this podcast, don't know who we are, you're welcome to get more information at um, crux.africa www.crux.africa or you can send an email to listen at crux.africa um, to find out more about our ministry and what we're doing um, yeah and so thanks for listening um, I think if people want to know about Rome of Africa as well should I share some of those links and connections I think uh, firstly yeah connecting to Rome is rimofafrica.co.za if anybody's interested in taking a look at that. Donnie's videos, again, was Donnie Westhouse on YouTube. And then if anybody would like to connect with me, um, with Fully Alive, whether you're intrigued about some self-discovery for yourself or whether you're part of a team, might be interested in doing um, any of the training workshops, team building, etc., that helps people to activate in their potential. I also do outdoor nature experiences in that as well. So actually doing those team buildings in nature, whether for a day or multi-day. 
As I said, email address is meg at wecanbefullyalive.com or www.fullyalive.com as well.